adjustments or revenue adjustments that would be good, but I think it has to be in the budget because the working group, which will result in some recommendations and everything, and then eventually an RFP, uh, if we go forward with this, to try to get the, the uh, extra money in October. Uh, and that's not going to get done by the time we get the budget done. So I think to do uh, honest budgeting, you have to have it in there uh, before we finalize the budget. Um, the uh, last thing is, uh, and Jimmy made a good point last night, we are talking about the solar farm, about Rose County. I forget the comments you made about numbers were lagging behind or something. We have a little history in that yeah. And this, this is not an area we want to lag behind in with our, all the calls I get from people, especially during this time that school is being closed with uh, lack of internet. So I think it's 100,000 times more important than that solar farm we improved, improved last night. So. And that's no, that's no hit on the solar farm. I'm just saying this is a really important issue. The, uh, I was told today by somebody in Forsyth that in Forsyth and Davidson County they're doing a survey of their students to ask them to go to school on the internet this uh, fall to reduce the class size for the ones who can't go, can't do the internet. So that's one way, I, I don't know if Dr. Rice has been asked to do that, but, but those counties are looking at, um, at um, if this is an, as an option to reduce the class size until the virus thing goes away or whatever it's going to do. So, um, I mean, you know, internet connectivity has kind of been my number one issue ever since I've been dealing with local government. And I think we are definitely in a position where we have to keep, keep it moving forward. <clears throat> I just don't understand how you can even hardly survive these days without having some internet capability at your house. Guess a few people are still doing it now. I guess they just ride around until they can find it somewhere, basically, is what they're doing. That's not very fair to our citizens, I guess. That's all I have to say about it for now. We're going to discuss it at the regular meeting. So. And we'll call it on that one. I can't support $500,000 in the budget for internet. This year, no way. <clears throat> I will insist on 500K will be my position. I'll make a very strong argument to do so. Yeah. I'll make an argument. We can't afford it. Can't afford not to do it, Ernest. Yeah, we can. No, we can't. We got the internet. They ain't got internet. Right. They're all over well, the county. Well, don't have well, internet. Can, they keep in mind. We got we'll the internet. We'll move on with sort it out. Let the board decide what. Do it. That's right. Position. Sure. Jimmy. Uh, I, I put some thought into this, even though I'm dealing brain fog with all the allergies and everything. Um, one thing that concerns me is we have another company in Stokes County. And they've been, they're entrepreneurs, they're also local. And uh, they've been getting some traction. I think they're up to 160-some clients and, and have plans for adding another, well, getting up close to 300 in the fairly near future. And one, one thing that I've kind of stumbled with other sort of uh, kind of speed bump for me is uh, how can we justify supporting one provider at the expense of another provider? And, and could, could it Stokes Wi-Fi is the company I'm referring to, and there may be some others out there I don't even know about, but um, I've had people tell me that they're very pleased with Stokes Wi-Fi service. They're filling the niche. And, and what we would be doing if we put everything toward River Street, seems like we would be uh, favoring one provider and creating competition for the other provider. And I don't know how we deal with that. I don't know where that, where that line falls. If you would, just kind of hold your thought and I'll go a little farther and maybe you can answer another thing or two at the same time. Uh, but um, I was wondering, given uh, circumstances like I've described, is 
this something that the work uh, group could address? How they, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. How they would sort of view uh, leveling the playing field as much as possible? Because I don't want to course somebody's ox by favoring another company. And in particular, when these people have been out there trying, they've got it together to some extent. They, they, they're getting some real traction now, from what I've heard and understand. And uh, I'm wondering if, if it can be worked out somehow so that we don't discourage these folks or harm what they're doing. And, and maybe we help River Street at the same time. But as Commissioner uh, Bankford has suggested, we, we don't know, you know, 500 is the amount, and Commissioner Morris says he's real strong on 500. Uh, I don't know if we look at ways to find out what the other company needs, what, what would really get them going, factor that in to the 500, or, or look for additional money to help Stokes Wi-Fi with. I, I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is. I guess that's why we have a, a work group. But uh, there's questions. Be beyond just whether or not we give 500 to River Street. That's why we give 500. What will we do? See, the issue is, is if, if you if you're going to start picking winners and losers like Slope's Wi-Fi, then you got to ask how much you're going to give to Time Warner, how much you're going to give to Windstream, how much you're going to give to all these other people that provide service in the county. The issue is not us leveling the playing field between private companies and the co-op. Go back and look at the history of co-ops. Co-ops were telephone, they used to be called rural telephone co-ops, I think. That's what and, and power. And, and power too. And they, they derived they were derived from the power co-ops. They were put in place to level the playing field between us and the municipalities and the heavy populated areas. But the playing field's already been leveled by allowing the co-ops to have the advantages they have because that's the only way rural people can get internet. So, so that's, that's the, the level playing field is basically done by the statutes and the fact that they let co-ops exist in the first place. And then we're going to give, we can, we're going to do an RFP. So we can, we're going to do a request for proposal and every one of those private companies can bid on it. If one of them comes in and says, I'll give you 600000 match it, and, do, and I'll reinvest all of my profits in Stokes County extending the network, then they, they win. But I'm not sure how a Wi-Fi company could come in and, and give you Wi-Fi service and then follow it with fiber since they don't do fiber. Well, uh, and, we, and I don't want to give up our fiber. We got to we got to we got to realize what what is the best value for the for the residents of Stokes County. Absolutely. Period. That's the whole. That's, that's what the whole RFP has to do. And you know, if, what, how do I know Stokes Wi-Fi is not going to take all the profits and go put it into uh, Crystal Coast LLC? That's their other company on the coast. Stokes Wi-Fi has two companies. They're not just Stokes Wi-Fi. Yeah, they got a whole thing at Emerald Isle Beach where they're going to park by. But we know, just based on the River Street business model already, if they uh, were to win the RFP, they're going to reinvest everything back in the county. They That's the advantage they have by being a co-op. They, they said. Now, I won't go on record saying they are. I won't go on record they said they was going to invest it back to the, to the, to the county. So I won't. Well, I mean, you can say us from headache on that because I don't want people to come say, you, know, you said they were going to do it. They said they were going to do it. That's what they, well, they are doing. I mean, that's what they do with all our customers. They invest the Wilkes County stuff back in Wilkes County. They invest the Patrick County back in Patrick County. Whatever. That's their business model. It can be verified very easily. Yeah, I mean, probably, probably, uh, you know, Surrey Telecom over there could bid on this. They're working with River Street. Yeah, but they, they, yeah, they are. But, sort of but they would only be bidding for their area of the county because they can't do the whole, for the whole rest of the county. And the River Street seems like Commissioner Morris that River Street has gone up to a certain or its line very increases. That, that line from the other side, they've agreed to us. No, 
they, 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 those are specified by law, those geographic areas. Mm -hmm. It's not an agreement between the two. So it's, it's, so it's one's not allowed to infringe on the other's area. As part of that rural telephone communication. Well, within the county, do you know what part of the county Coach Wi-Fi can claim as their service? What part of the streets has their service? Now, some of it would overlap, I'm sure. But, I, you know, but, I mean, that gives the residents, the residents can buy it from Stokes Wi-Fi instead of River Street if there happens to be a conflict. There's big competition there, whatever the price was, I guess, and how they do that. But would you, would you say, or would you agree, possibly, or possibly not, that if we do end up funding River Street, that we're sort of tilting the odds in their favor competitively? Well, the RFP is designed to sort all that out. That's why the law requires us to do an RFP, give everybody a chance to bid. Well, when this bidding process occurs... Just like we did it before. You put it, and this debacle with the school board. Yeah, that's all history. History, and I'm not even going to mention it. It really doesn't matter much since we got it. It's all it's all. But when it comes time to bid, can River Street bid on a certain part of the county and Stokes Wi-Fi bid on another part, or does it have to be all or nothing? No, our RFP would be for everything, I guess, except we wouldn't put the Surrey stuff in it because that's a separate area. We'd basically just do an RFP just like we did the last time. And you might agree to send the county money and come and put it out there. Yeah. But the RFP process is designed to give everybody a chance to bid and give us the best value based on what we put in there as our requirements. Do you think there's any possibility, and you don't have a crystal ball, and I realize this, but do you think there's any possibility that River Street would be willing to work with Stokes Wi-Fi in some ways, particularly to say, you're already set up and you're in good shape to provide service to this area right here. We're going to let you keep providing service. Well, that'd be an Eric Kramer question. Exactly. But they've got, I mean, they own five. They own five or six. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, they own five. Yeah. 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 Y
the OSA thing, and we'd have to ask Eric Kramer this. He may have said it the other night, but I'm not sure until we commit to the 500 that he's going to pay the 80000 to do the propagation study. Do y'all remember if he said they were going to move forward with that anyway? I think he's still. He said they were going to pay for it, I yeah. know, but I don't know if he said they would start it until they were sure that we were going to be interested in moving forward with them. And do we actually have an idea? I know there's a lot of uncertain areas, but do we actually have an idea how many households want the internet through the county? Does anybody know the answer to that question? I think he said 5,000. 5,000 people has expressed interest in getting internet? Friends of their map and what they, they've covered, other sources or other providers have covered. Mm -hmm. Totaled everything up. There were about 5,000 people who need the internet that know that. Or have very limited service that's only good for certain things and not adequate for all for the really adequate for the rest. I know we're all, I know everybody's not on Facebook, but I'm trying to pay attention to some of the stuff on there and don't comment a whole lot, I'm just like reading through and just see who knows. Last I seen, this was a six wife I think, and I seen a River Street thing. If you put the two together, it looked like it was like a total of 127 people or households that want internet. That's not even, I mean, that's less than double what River Street has now and a lot less than what Wi-Fi, uh, Stokes Wi-Fi has right now. But I'm, I'm sure there's more out there, but if there was 5,000 households underserved, you figured you'd see a whole lot more than that. Mention something about I, it. I might be wrong on that number that just what you mentioned. Well, did we know, I seem to recall Eric Kramer yeah. uh, mentioning that, that number. And, and internet access, is a high priority for me. That's the way of living now. Uh, it is, it's, yeah, it's just something people really need and want. Uh, and, and I'm very much in favor of trying to find the best ways to uh, to address that need. I just don't want to stump our toes and, and look back and say, well, what should we do that all different? That's not seem quite right. So if we can get it right to start with, Without slowing down the process, that would be my thing. I think our business process and using RFP will take care of that. Uh, yeah. What's the law set up to make it do that? So, okay. so if you're saying, Commissioner Morris, that it's set up to, to do what you just mentioned, where does the work, work group come in? The work group's got to first decide if we want to do it, and then they got to provide information to. Uh, uh, Eric and them uh, stuff to like to get the propagation study done to get maps to them uh, things like that and then basically come, come up with recommendations for the board commission to make the decision. An example would be for instance uh, I was going to recommend that we put Robin on that work group up at the park I asked her a question and she's looking into it when I heard when we got this proposal about would the park be willing to let us put antennas up on like on the observation tower up there if they could get Wi-Fi in the park and she was going to check it. She said she thought that kind of made sense and she's going to check on it to see, but you know, to get the working group together to answer all those kind of questions figure out if we need to go forward with this or not. And of course address the RFP. I put together the RFP uh, clean RFP that comes out of the working group to put for the board commissioners to approve. Um, talk about the funding, what recommend the level of funding and so forth and all those kind of things. I'm completely on board with going forward. With it. I'm still kind uh, of keeping an open mind as to how we go forward. I think it's imperative that this commissioner board approve the RFP I think by reading that you get all your questions answered. Oops, I didn't know. If it's not, then the RFP's not good enough. <laughs> well, the problem is, right now, there's no promise to the grant money. Last I heard, there's still not really up saying it's available. I know they said 30 million, possibly, mm -hmm. but from what I'm hearing from the upper level, right now, there's nothing. There's nothing been discussed, there's nothing been promised. It's, uh, especially at the state level, we're in trouble. We're, we're in big trouble. Yeah. In the DOT, all of us, we're in big trouble. Yeah, it might be something to get pushed off the next year. We don't know. But you know, the worst case scenario is we still get a five hundred thousand dollars match, and, you, and probably you know, 
depend on that propagation study, we might be able to go a long way on a million bucks. Be interesting. I mean, Eric wasn't giving any specifics the other night because he hadn't done the study, but you just think of all these peaks and different places you might stick towers and stuff. It may not, may not be as hard a problem as you think. The water tanks, farm silos, yeah. even a, a barn or mm -hmm. living house. Yeah. Yeah. Suitably located. One thing on your question while I go is talking about the houses and the locations. I think Greg downstairs has data that shows every house in the county, give you a quick count, every residence, every business, whatever. Then you can look at like what area that's covered now by what we have in the ground. Then you can look at look at how many houses would be not covered by that. Well, those last updates seem not it keeps it updated, I think pretty much I think all the tax records and stuff have to keep it updated. I know when you got a album a way amount of more people building new houses and stuff yeah. there are some. That's what it's like five going right now. Yeah. But the question then yeah. is you, you know like you know how many people they know right now how many people Eric and get the service off of what's currently in the ground. You know, he said in those areas, those uh, nine areas, like the highest one they got is 33% yet. So just because you put it beside of somebody don't mean they're going to take it. And, uh, and if that gets out of the control of the um, of the provider, whoever they are, because they, I guess they make an estimate or something, but just because somebody can get it don't automatically mean they're going to. And like the power. Yeah. The one thing one thing he did say in that with that study is they can pre qualify every individual house on the signal side. So that might help, you know, if people know for sure what signal they can get, then that might make it easier to start figuring out how many people really want it versus I guess there's a few people that don't care a bit about it. And it is, I mean uh, I mean a few, but I don't know how they can do it. Well there's some who still use the cell phone and they got the cell phone service. I think it's the wrong way for them, but the older generation is just don't care for them. I mean, yeah, there's just some folks that aren't kind of in that loop, the older folks. Yeah, so I don't blame them. I mean, if I grew up growing up on a farm, they had no doubt. I probably wouldn't have no use for it now. So. Yeah, but I think, you know, whenever everybody, when you get this out there and you get real specific about who can get it, and then they start comparing these like $45 and $35 a month prices to their cell phone, yeah. I think they might win a few folks over on that. I come down. <laughs> anyway, as far as putting the five hundred thousand in, y'all just want to make this a quick vote. I got a comment I want to make. All right. I done voted one point eight million dollars for River Street, and I hadn't seen anything out of it. So. That's the reason why I, I can't support the 500,000 package. Back when y'all done that right there, was there? And I, forgive me, because I just was not paying attention to anything at that time. Was there any promises given by River Street at the time that, okay, here by year one, we're going to have this, year two this, year three this? Yes. And was a projection of several thousand, a few thousand by year five or more? Oh, no, or near that. It was. Oh, no. original network. It was so many. I don't know. They promised a whole lot, and I hadn't seen it. You gave eight one point eight, Ernest, and they have given eight million four hundred ninety eight thousand to us. Yeah, and they've done exactly what they said they were going to. Do. Okay. And if anybody wants to lay that lay that down in detail on it, I'll be I've got a question. They were hoping, I think, to get five hundred customers.
contract inspection saying they're highly interested. All of them pointed it and they will not run it down that road. It runs right past the road on 672, but won't do it. They just said it wasn't feasible. I don't quite get that, but I don't know. Maybe I ain't seen something there. What's so great about this change in wireless technology is that oh, we were talking about estimating maybe 500, maybe 300 over a certain time. Now all of a sudden we're going to be talking about thousands within a couple of years. Also the technology, it blankets, you know, it just blankets everything versus having to go to every individual house. So, so that's a game changer. And we still have that advantage of eventually, based on the demand, they reinvest all that money back in the county that they get from the wireless customers. And we have that advantage of them coming behind it and putting fiber in and making it even better. So I'm not, um, I'm just going to give a woman. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put it I'm not saying I'm against it. Uh, I'm not. Uh, but until I get a little bit more comfort in the news from up above us that, yeah, grant money is going to be available. That's not what I'm hearing right now. I mean, like I said, I know you said the budget being more responsible on that part, but there's always this budget amendment. We've done that budget amendment. We can easily explain to our citizens why we're doing it. I don't think there'll be any complaints. And I'm just kind of looking to be on the more, more conservative side right now. Um, I mean, the thing is, we can show we've got the money. It's in the fund balance, correct? And you can pull it at any time with a you know, majority of the board vote. My vote is right now not to put it into the budget. But that's, that's just my vote. That's kind of, if you're planning on doing it, that's kind of a improper way to budget. Well, but it's there. I mean, we can explain it if we've done a budget amendment. So, yeah, the, 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 I, would, I would argue where that 30 million is there. If it's not there, then that's even more reason to do 500K because oh, we're going to have some million. You know, I mean, it's almost, a, almost more important. We got to keep the thing going. The kids ain't got anything to study with. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree. And the bad thing is, it don't matter what we do. If we put up $2 million right now, we're still not going to get it this year. That's that's the thing. Yeah, we got a couple of years. Yeah. But if we delay everything we delay on trying to get outside funds, it's going to slow it down, push it out more years. That'll start happening real quick. I just, we may see windows, you know. So. And I value your opinion. Don't think I'm. Look, I mean, I, I value your opinion. I was going to ask Julia uh, her opinion on the budget and the 500000 whether or not it will be used. I know we've got a work group that we're looking at and forming and some hurdles to get over and hoops to go through before we start actually pushing the buttons. But would, we better, would it be better to go ahead and budget five hundred or, or to... Uh, when the time comes and everything's in place to do a budget amendment from a finance um, perspective, which, which would work better if either, or is it six and one and a half dozen or the other? Whatever the board would, wants to do, I mean, you won't take it out of fund balance either way, mm -hmm. unless for some reason in the first month we see the revenues are coming in. They should be on sales tax and stuff, but you know until you see that, I can't. You know, I don't know. It will have to come out of fund. From right now, it's going to have to come out of fund balance. You mentioned um, a couple of hundred thousand and change. That's an economic development that possibly could be used toward this. Yeah, you could change. The board can change the direction of those funds. They were, put, they were put in there for feasibility studies. But the board can decide that they don't want, want to hold off on the feasibility studies and use that for something else. That's up to the board. I would be interested in Will's input on what the reason for the feasibility studies might be. Do you know? Uh, 
with their response and see what yeah, degree of urgency there is and pressure forward with that study. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm transferring 100000 to capital reserve for public buildings for HVAC roofs or anything that may break. Now, they've got a hundred some, they have a hundred and Thing out, a uh, hundred some thousand left in there this year with what I'm taking out in the budget. So, I mean, you could choose not to transfer that money. I mean, that's there's another option. It's the most important thing going on so, here. I don't understand if anybody between, don't get that. You know, it, it's the most important thing difference between in this budget. I think the citizens are going to tell you that too. Budget amendment, placing it in the budget, is showing the folks what you are determined on what needs to be done. What you are dedicated to. I can say it. What we'll think about it. Budget amendment is made to come right. So if you, if, if you are, if you are in a position to where you feel like that strongly about the internet being service to the county, then I would recommend that you place it in the budget yeah. because that's showing folks that that's what you're willing to do. If you don't do it, you can always do a budget amendment and put it back take in it the back. Always take that's it back. Appro that's the appropriate way to do budgeting. That's what budgeting rules say you should do, not how to play, kind of play games with it on. If it don't work out, you put that money right back in your fund balance. If we put it in the budget, anybody who can and will answer this, I appreciate it. If we put it in the budget, when and what kind of decisions would this board need to make regarding those funds? Okay. Uh, if we put it in the budget, we're really just in, just in a holding pattern until we get a recommendation on whether we're going to go forward or not. Then we would have to. Uh, I don't know what the process is. We do an RFP and figure out who who's getting it, who's getting the grant, and then there they would take it from applying for the additional money in October. Is there any possibility that we could hear a presentation from Stokes Wi-Fi and be able to answer them, ask them questions? Get information directly from them. Uh, Why them and not like uh, stream or kind of spectrum or all that? Because uh, wind stream and high water. And all those guys could do this too if they wanted. Whoever else, to the best of my knowledge, has not shown an interest in using this material, using this process. Anyone have any information contrary to that? Does anyone have any indication that I have to look at these spectrum or, or any of these others have shown any I'm interest in trying to provide service to their customers with fixed wireless? I'm not aware of it. You may or may not have. I don't think Spectrum does wireless. What I'm saying, I mean, from what I'm saying, I don't think they do. I don't think Windstream does either. I'm a Windstream customer. That Yes, uh, I, I thought we agreed that uh, we was going to put a, a group together to, to look at this when we made any decisions. Okay. It'll be on, it'll be on the agenda Monday. Well, you got to, if uh, the, the budget's going to get approved before the group can do its work. So you got to have. They can do it before. You got to have funding allocated if you budget properly. You can't do it before. It takes too long. You got to have a propagation study and stuff. <clears throat> you know, talking about the one point eight million dollar investment, and you know. What the 1.8 <coughs> buys you about 45 miles of fiber to put in the ground. We have between two and 300 miles in the ground right now. 231. So, you know, we talk about 1.8, 500K. Is that 
that's a lot of money, but when you're talking about telecommunications infrastructure, those are chicken feed numbers. 1.8 and 500k. Chicken feed to get up. To get a wireless structure put in place or a fiber structure. Also, it's just expensive, like right? that kind of okay, infrastructure. Excuse me a little bit. Real charge. I don't have any more comments. You're meeting. Motion to adjourn. Well, let me let me kind of, if anybody's interested, share where I am at this particular point. Um, I'm willing to approve this as part of the budget, providing that we have uh, certain steps that this board will need to follow before a final decision is made, particularly uh, input from uh, the work group, maybe uh, evaluating the RFP, uh, uh, it will be worded, uh, those types of things. Now, I'm not saying if we put it in now, we're just automatically giving 500000 to River Street, because I think we have some more work to do. But I would go along putting it in the budget provisionally that certain uh, steps have to be followed before anybody receives those funds. Can't legally give it to anybody. We have to do an RFP, and that's what we did last time. We had two bidders last time. You agree with that?
do been, with them. That's been in existence for what, seven, eight, nine years, and they got that many. Not that many years. Went in in 07, I believe. Three. Uh, that'd be 13 years. And just about three or four years ago. So it hadn't been five years yet. Are you in favor of believing this born into the budget with restrictions? Uh, I'm not in, interested in putting it in the budget. Mr. Chairman, is this a Well, I just think the uh, group, the working group that uh, I talked about, will be so important because it's not handled. Seen what can happen when you have groups that do not work together. We want, we do not want four or five different people trying to go to meetings. It needs to be one person. I wouldn't want to be on the group. But I think you know, when we, sort of like Rick was talking earlier, he, when he was talking about the vehicle maintenance, that you just make two people who are going to make the final decision to be the same way with this working group. You want one person leading the group. And of course, getting input from everybody. I think you want someone to be on the group.
I guess, you know, maybe we just tell them we got that fund balance and if they have an emergency or something, yeah. they have to have, they can come. Um, so I'd say um, I'm good with the 300 and I'm good with, uh, there are four things that they brought to us. The highest priority of mine would be that one they have about capital, uh, about classified uh, employees yeah. getting caught up with everybody else on the pay. I don't really have a priority for the other three. Personally, y'all do. And then the other thing I was just going to say is, if we were looking at that two hundred something thousand capital fund, if there was some way that we could use some of that, since it's going to them anyway, eventually, to uh, to support these distance learning kind of things that they're going to be required to do. I don't know if that's considered capital. I don't either. We'll have to go up. Can you find out? Find out for as capital expenditures we could do to help anything associated with them being able to go to school on the internet. If I could give it to them, then they can help us fund the internet expansion. <laughs> Why don't you ask that question? Ask if we give if we gave it to them if they could use it for internet expansion. That'd be a very good question to ask based on the amount of uh, grant money they have received in mm -hmm. through this COVID. Mm -hmm. Received in three different areas and it's on up to about one what is it, one point eight million dollars yeah. they've got. It could be that something is allocated in there to where it does thing that's kind of related to that is the fact that the E-rate people are looking at and trying to help with distance learning. Right. So if for some way we could if get some more money to them for distance learning, then I'd like to explore how we do that. Maybe just get them to ask, answer that question. And what was it on current expense? Current expense is just give them 300. 300. I agree with that. Yeah. And that's but all? Okay. For right now, that's all. Okay.
list of counties and some of them were filled in, some weren't, on what <coughs> their revenue estimates were. And they varied anywhere from 5% reduction to 20%, the highest I saw. So, so I think we're okay with the 13 where we're at based on that. But there were a lot of them that were 25 or 6 or 7%. Mm -hmm. Remember that 13% reduction, you know, we, we got the April sales tax and it came in higher than last year. Yeah. See, I was using last year's April figures and taking it down, so. April's is, do you, you want to start looking at it, sales tax? But your, your real numbers is going to be uh, your May, June, and July. Yeah, July and August is going to be your, because really April's was for, January sales tax really they keep us two months behind even though they say it's April sales tax it's really January uh, does that include Walmart closing only for about 12 hours uh, I think yes. <laughs> February well, that, would be February. that would be February that would be February it's all boarded up yeah that's all Walmart so they just, yeah all Walmarts were doing that yeah. April's would have been February's current in sales It'll be interesting to see what May and June, but I won't get those till July and August. Yeah, we're going to have a bad quarter to it. Everybody knows it's just a matter of how yeah. bad it is. Yeah. It's stupid shutdown. <laughs> like Lee Carter said, this is something we've never seen before. He said, I guess we'll learn, but. <laughs> he didn't have any projections, did he? Or? No. no. Well, you're, not you're not going to know the fall of huh? this. You're not going to know the fall of January. No. Yeah. You have? I just, before we adjourn, if we're getting close. Um, you, I think Commissioner Morris asked this, and maybe one other person, about the Friends of Soak Shelter asking them for an updated report on their financials and just kind of an impact on their budget if they didn't receive that money, which is not recommended in the budget. I emailed that out to you when I received it from them. I requested it from Lily Staples, and she sent it pretty quickly. I had a board meeting coming up that worked out. I just want to make sure you received that, and I've got copies if you didn't, just for your information. I'll need to look at it again. Yeah. I've got the, the breakdown through, it's through April the 30th, and then I've got their letter in there about their, their request, so I can give you a copy if you need it. I don't recall seeing it, so I may need a copy. Okay. It's not recommended in the budget, but I know we had made that request, and I didn't get that from her, so. I probably have it in this